This is the 2023 Subaru Outback. I borrowed this model, believe it or not, from my friends here at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's right, it's used. Somebody already traded it in. But if you want to know about the changes and see if Subaru made the right changes for 2023, this is the right video to watch. If you want to know more about this exact model, check out the link in the description of the video. If you want to come to Holmes Honda and buy it, well, that will help you get the ball rolling to do that. The advantages here to this model, it's really an SUV, but a lot of people call it a wagon. Tell me in the comments what your thoughts are on that. It has a roomy interior and the loading roof or the cargo area has plenty of space up here and within the interior as well. It has above average off-roading capability. That's for sure compared to most competitors and with the optional turbocharged engine, you definitely will find a lot of horsepower under the hood. If I was going to sound the gong on anything with this particular Outback, it would definitely be what's under the hood. This is definitely not the powerful version of the engine that is available. This is the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. It makes 176 horsepower and 182 pounds feet of torque. And another place that a lot of you will definitely sound the gong, I think, is the fact that it does have a CVT. I haven't driven one of these yet. I don't know how well behaved the CVT is in this Outback, but we'll find out on the test drive. But the advantage to this particular engine combination, since it's the lesser of the two available, is the MPGs. You're looking at 26 city, 32 highway, and 18, or excuse me, 28 miles per gallon combined. So that does have its advantages in that respect. As far as tire and wheel size, 235 on the width, we're gonna have a 60 series sidewall wrapped around 18 inch wheels. And the trim that wraps its way around here is actually very well done. I like the way that it's designed. The roundness kind of takes a taper off and slants down right here. I don't know, it just gives it a nice look, comes back down and has a little bit of a round corner to it to finish things off. And you will notice a little bit of extra space between the top of the tire and where the fender starts right here. That is for off-roading capabilities. That way the tire has plenty of room to travel up and down when off-roading without actually getting into places that it shouldn't. And obviously working its way all the way down the body. So nice body lines, kind of hard to see with the white exterior color but you will find the traditionally placed Outback logo right here. That's always nice. And a very similar look on the rear as far as the fender flare goes right here compared to what we saw on the front. If you want to tow with your Outback, it is capable of towing up to 3,500 pounds. And we have 32.6 feet, or cubic feet, let's say. And if you would like to do some towing with your Outback, well, your maximum numbers are going to be 3,500 pounds. Don't think there's a lot of people towing with an Outback, but you never know. Cargo capacity, obviously you have your cargo cover right here that you can use to conceal away anything you don't want people to see, but you have 32.5 up to seven, excuse me, 32.6. Let's not forget that little digit that we missed there. 32.6 up to 75.6 cubic feet. Quite a bit of space back here in the rear area, as you can see. And if you want to lower the rear seats, here are the releases. There are also releases on the top of the seats that passenger seats a little too far back and that's why we have that issue of the seat not going all the way down but there is a lot of space within the interior here even a little bit of space here on the side you've got the net to keep things in place depending on what your situation is and obviously with maximum cargo space capabilities there's quite a bit here and part of that is going to be dependent on where these front seats are set depending on how far back or how far forward they are. And yes, you can use the buttons right here to close the power tailgate. You can close it. You can also lock the doors if you want to when you close this tailgate as well. And taking a look into the back seat at a little bit of a different angle, we kind of look back there already. But I do like the design of what we have here. 
two-tone on the colors right here. And then you don't have a very large door bin right here, but there is enough space for a nice water bottle or a blender bottle, a protein powder, pre-workout, whatever the case may be. Soft touch materials, those actually are quite soft compared to a lot of what I experience with other vehicles. Comfortable armrest there and the nice contrast stitching right here. You will find gloss black. So if you're not a fan of gloss black, well, there's what you don't like the fingerprints that show up on the gloss black and then i'll show you right here this is the release that you can use on the seats to lower them down from the interior if you want to and since this seat is so far back right here we'll focus on the driver's side over here i like the fact that you have the upper and the lower rear seat pockets right here kind of nice to have that there's quite a bit of space there quite a few options as far as well what can be stored in there and then we're going to have the dual air conditioning vents back here the heated seats that's going to help during the cold weather especially if you're one of those people in colorado using your subaru because it has that effective all-wheel drive and then the usb connectivity back here there really needs to be more options than just one each as there is right there i'd like to see maybe three usb ports in the rear seats of some of these vehicles, but we just don't see that very often, even though you have seating for three people back here. And then the fold down armrest, honestly, this is not the perfect setup for an armrest. Why? Because if there's a drink on either side or both sides here, well, here's the problem. You kind of lose the ability to use that as an armrest. At least your rear seat passengers do. It would be better to maybe have that in the middle. But that's just my thinking. That's not the way Subaru designed it, but just something I thought I would point out. If you're a fan of the panoramic sunroof, well, you're not going to find that here. But I know some people are not really that concerned about it, but this is what you have, the conventional size sunroof. And looking in through the passenger side front door, well, we're going to find pretty much the same things we saw on the rear doors. There is a little bit more space here with the door bend, still those nice soft touch materials, a very comfortable armrest. A lot of the time, these materials are harder than what we have here. You can almost hear it. I don't know if you can hear that right there. You can actually hear the softness in that. Everything very nicely done here. Power seats for the driver and the passenger. And then on the passenger side, you don't have the extension right here, but you do on the front seat. I think you can see that from here. I'll try and remember, remember to show that to you. They are power, obviously, on both sides. And then a little bit of space right here above the glove box for, well, whatever you can get to fit right there. Maybe a bag of Skittles or I don't know. If you have a really old flip phone, it might actually fit there. I'm not sure. I haven't had one of those in so long, I couldn't remember. And that is a fairly deep, large glove box right there. So a lot of space in that respect. Also going to find USB connectivity right here and some storage space as well power parking brake and good news for those of you who may say well i'm not crazy about that cvt but at least it's not a push button shifter so there you go on that there's your cup holders and i do like the fact that the lid for the console that doubles as an armrest is fairly high up compared to what we see in some other vehicles you have a couple of different areas here where you can put well whatever you want to right there as far as storage space that is actually there or you can open this up and get into the entirety of the console you're going to find a 12 volt power outlet if i can get that open there we go and a little bit more space right here up here is going to be the control for the power sunroof that you can slide open or tilt open depending on your situation you can turn on the map lights as well here are the vanity mirrors on the sun visors hi everybody since i'm behind the camera most of the time now you can see me say hello in front of the camera well sort of and let's see if those actually these visors actually come back yeah they do nice and far really you'd have to be sitting pretty far back for the sun to be able to sneak through this area right here so very well done and even though i know that 182 horsepower is probably not going to have people grabbing for the grab handles, but you never know. It depends on how well the driver is handling things behind the wheel. Speaking of that, why don't we get behind the wheel and see what the driver can expect to find? That's probably you, because most of the time passengers are not watching these videos. And for the most part, on the driver's side door, we're going to see the same things we saw on the passenger side. With a few exceptions, you can lock and unlock the windows. 
control all four windows. You can control the settings for those power side view mirrors, and there are two different seat memory settings. Now, what you won't find here are the controls to activate the child safety locks. You will actually do that here on the rear doors. This is how you do it. And this is very important for a couple of different reasons. You can see the word lock right here, at least I hope the camera's picking that up, and the down arrow. So when this is in the up position like it is now, the child safety locks are inactive. When you put it into that down position, it's active on at least one door. It doesn't activate both from here. And I know somebody might ask about that. But here's the thing. Let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere and you want to take a nap in the rear of your outback. You're out in the outback, maybe. Make sure that at least one of these doors, whether it's on the passenger side or the driver's side, that this is in the up position. If they're both locked and nobody is around to help you out, well, you're gonna be getting out through the pass-through, coming through the pass-through, crawling through there to get into the front seat. Heated seats here in the front, obviously both power. There's that thigh extension I was telling you about right there that's only on the driver's side, but it is there. Here is the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And I'm gonna start things up. We're gonna hit the button right here to start the engine up. And depending on your preference, well, you have whatever you want here. If you like analog, you have that. If you like digital, you have that as well as far as your speedometer goes. If you like knowing which direction you're going, but you're directionally challenged, you have the compass right there in the center. And you might notice the kind of flashing effect that's going on right there. That is not the fault of Subaru. That is the fault of my GoPro shutter speed. A common problem with GoPros, just so you know. Here's the control for your headlights right here and also a thing known as the blinker lever or turn signal lever. When you push it into the up position like that, it means you're letting people around you know that you're moving to the right. When you push it into the down position, you're letting them know that you're moving to the left. It's called common courtesy. Some of you may not have that option on your vehicles, and so I wanted to show you what it's like to use that. Can't say anything sarcastic about the lever right here for controlling the front and rear window wipers, but there you go. Steering wheel mounted controls, obviously. You've got your cruise control, and then you can go through all sorts of information on the dashboard, different things like that right there. And here is the button if you ever need to turn your hazard lights on for that. And the very nice touch screen right here, very easy to use. You can see that you have quite a bit going on there as far as different options and features go. We'll go into reverse and let you see what the rear view camera looks like. It does kind of have a fish eye view to it, honestly. So I don't know that that's a big deal or not, but that's what you have, but it's there. And here, is the control for volume and turning your radio on and off, tuning stations, all that good stuff. Everything is here as far as different ways with connectivity, things you can do with your phone. It's all here. A really pretty sim simple system to use, I would say. And then down here you have all the controls for your AC, for fan speed, for temperature, for turning on and off those three different settings for the heated seats for the driver and the passenger. I will say this, that's one thing that could probably improve, physical buttons for all of that. That way, it's a lot easier to deal with. You don't have to look down and take your eyes off the road potentially to deal with all of that. And then one thing that I will say here is the auto stop start feature on this vehicle is a bit overly obnoxious. I think any auto stop start feature is obnoxious for the most part. The good thing, you can turn it off if you want to. That's always a good thing. You can also go in and change a lot of different settings here. As you can see, clock display, Wi-Fi settings, Wi-Fi security information, hotspot, everything is here. Valet mode, you can go into the camera and make changes if you want to. You can see what all is here. It's a very easy system to learn if you haven't used it before. So that's a good thing. And let me do this. Let's put this car into gear and we're going to move forward a little bit. Listen to what happens. It's going to start dinging at me. And then it's going to get louder. <laughs> well, I say it'll get louder. Maybe not. There it goes. That is a good reason to wear your seatbelt. I'm sure there is a way within the infotainment system to turn that off. And here is something I have never seen in any vehicle in my entire life, especially with 
over 900 videos of reviewing cars, trucks, and SUVs. But right here, you have the birthday list, so you don't forget anybody's birthday. And then you also have the anniversary list. That way, you don't forget about your anniversary. I don't know. I guess you could have a lot of different anniversaries. It doesn't have to be marriage. It could be a lot of things. Maybe anniversary of how long you've owned your Subaru Outback. I don't know. But I just thought that was really interesting when I saw that. And by the way, because I know a lot of you ask about this, is navigation built in? You can see map right here. So yes, navigation is indeed built into this infotainment screen for the Outback. Okay, we're going to hop out on the road for our test drive. And I have to admit, the first thing I noticed here is that the 182 horsepower definitely seems to be a bit underwhelming, but it is what it is. And for some people, that might work really well. Again, if you're looking for the best gas mileage, well, that's going to be the situation there. But not everybody is a race car driver like I am either. So you might think, well, 182 horsepower is more than enough. Feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments section. Maybe you've owned one of these Outbacks or currently do with this 2.5 liter engine under the hood. So always curious to know what you think about these sorts of things. But overall, I must say, it's a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. It has a pretty smooth ride, which is always a plus. Even when you have something that's capable of going off-road, a lot of the time, the ride quality tends to be a lot more stiff than it would be otherwise, but that's definitely not the case here. Plenty of space. I'm very comfortable, uh, not only within the seat itself, but I just, I don't feel cramped in here. I don't feel crowded. I don't feel like it's just, you know, I'm in a tiny vehicle. So that's a good thing as well. But it also at the same time doesn't feel like I'm driving in you know, a full-size SUV, a Suburban, a Yukon, a Cadillac Escalade, whatever the case is. So I like the feel of the vehicle overall. Steering seems to be pretty responsive. There is a little bit of play in the steering wheel, a little bit more than I would like to have. But then again, if you drive this out and back every single day, you would probably forget all about that. You'd probably get used to it and it wouldn't be an issue. But overall, an enjoyable vehicle to drive. I will say this, right now the temperature is a little bit higher. I had it set that way earlier. It was a lot cooler when I started the video earlier this morning and now I need to turn the temperature down but I don't want to look down at the screen to do that. This is where having those physical buttons would come in so handy I wouldn't have to worry about it then. I could just, you know, as long as I know where they are by memory, just reach down there and do what I need to do as far as which buttons to push, turn the fan speed down, all of that kind of stuff. But overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. I do wish that we had the ability to get off-road and see what it would be like to actually take this out back off-roading, but don't have the opportunity for that and I'm pretty sure that my friends at home's Honda would probably be kind of upset with me if I came back and it was absolutely dripping with mud and dirt and all that kind of stuff. While there are not a lot of changes other than what we see to the rear here and on the front end that I showed you earlier, there are some changes obviously for 2023. Tell me what you think. Did Subaru make the right changes to the Outback? Tell me what you think and tell me why you answered the way that you did. Got to say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda for loaning me this freshly used Outback for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.